Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, please don't hesitate to click and subscribe. It keeps the channel going. The video you're going to see is a travelogue of my trip to Half Moon Bay in California. It is a part of my new series called Drone Tours of America the Beautiful. And I'm hoping that you guys will really enjoy this and get something out of it and maybe even make a hike out there because there are a lot of things to see and do in that region. Half Moon Bay has a diverse landscape. It encompasses miles of wide sandy beaches, lush meadows and rolling forested hills. There is plenty to explore here. It's only about 45 minutes south of San Francisco downtown and so you can even do a day trip or make it a whole week worth of activities if you wish to stay in the area. The area was actually called a Spanish town back in the 1800s and in 1874 it officially became known as Half Moon Bay. It was named after the beautiful crescent shaped harbor that lies north of town. It still to this day has a working harbor and is most popular for surfing and water sports. It will definitely inspire you to hop aboard a fishing boat, maybe take a kayak down there or stand up paddle board if you're into that and explore the diverse marine ecosystem. The highlight of this area are the two world-class waterfront golf courses. If you're into golfing, this area is a golfer's paradise. When we were down there, we went to the Half Moon Beach State Park. We went to the ritz Carlton area and we also drove about 20 minutes north to a town called Pacifica for a very specific reason, which I'll highlight later in the video. The State Beach is a single state park made up of four beaches. You got the Francis Beach, Venice Beach, Dunes Beach and Roosevelt Beach. All these four beaches are very close together but separated enough that you can enjoy each beach as its own experience. Parking in each beach roughly costs about $10 per day. That's what they charged us when we were there. And they also said that the same parking slip is valid at other areas as long as you are within that same day. Which means you can park in one area, pay 10 bucks, get that parking slip and use that to park in other areas at no cost. So do take advantage of that if you are doing beach hopping. All these beaches are favorite spots for sunbathing, picnics, surfing, fishing and even camping. There are campgrounds around in the region that uh, if you are planning on staying for more than a day you can pretty much perch yourself there and uh, I have posted some links at the bottom of this video that might actually help you with the list of activities that you can do including booking camping grounds and all that stuff. As far as the water goes it's pretty much cold in this area throughout the year and not just that there, there are very strong rip currents as well so just be very careful. There are warning signs posted throughout all the beach sites but be mindful when you're in water, especially if you're not a good swimmer. The rip currents are, uh, are crazy out there. If you're into surfing though, this area is uh, a treat. I mean, it's, it's actually a surfer's paradise. You can even experience the world famous Mavericks. So if you are into surfing, you should definitely go and visit Half Moon Bay. Besides surfing, there is also horseback riding. It's pretty cool actually. You, you can... Uh, there are two ranches. Uh, the most popular one is the Seahorse Ranch. Both ranches, including the Seahorse Ranch, offers uh, guided horseback riding along the beach. The rides include an hour's worth of trail only, or you can do a trail and beach combo that lasts anywhere between an hour to an hour and a half to even two hours. And again, I've posted links at the bottom of this video that you can access the Seahorse Ranch website. You can even do bookings in advance before you get there so that you don't miss out on this experience. I saw when we, I was shooting these drone videos, I saw a bunch of horses uh, riding along the beach and it looked pretty cool actually. So next time I might end up doing that. One of the things that we did not get a chance to see, which everybody said was very popular in the area was the Pigeon Point light station. Uh, it is a 115 feet tall lighthouse that's literally perched on the side of cliffs. It's uh, considered to be one of America's tallest lighthouses and it was built in 1872. Uh, the lighthouse is closed to the public now, but uh, visitors can tour the grounds 
they can explore the hiking trails around the area and marshland and even picnic on the grounds so do go and visit the pigeon point lighthouse i was told it's really pretty i've seen pictures of it it's very famous and it's been photographed quite a bit too so it's worth a shot uh, i'm definitely going to take an opportunity to go and see it next time when i'm in the in the region besides the surfing horseback riding and the pigeon point light station visits this area highlights the coastal trail that's what it's known for the half moon bay coastal trail is pretty famous it's roughly about 3 and a half miles long and it's heavily trafficked out it offers a chance to see the diverse californian wildlife so do hike in that area um and it's good for all skill levels the trail is primarily used for hiking walking and pretty much running as well and it's accessible throughout the year that's the nice thing about california right you can uh, it's pretty much warm uh, most of the time so you can take advantage of that the entire coastal trail is actually 11 and a half miles when it's done from its entirety from start to finish you can start at the darnell trail at cypress ave on moss beach or in the south side you can start at the coval ranch trail uh, south of uh, <coughs> miramont's point so you can start either the north or the south and do the entire 11 and a half miles but the most popular one is the 3 and a half mile short stretch uh, and again i posted links at the bottom so that you can see uh, and access which trails you actually want to do whether you want to do the short trail of 3 and a half miles or you want to spend the time for uh, doing the entire 11 and a half mile stretch for cyclists the best stretch extends about 7 and a half miles from pillar point harbor all the way down to ritz cart and without stops the one way journey clocks roughly about 45 to 60 minutes so it's uh, for bicyclists and uh, uh, bike enthusiasts it's a fantastic way to do it so you see how many things you can do in this area right i never knew this before i uh, ventured into this area i always thought half moon bay was just uh, a site that you can just go and sit back and relax but there are so many things you can do there and again i posted a link below for hiking and biking guides so do check it out just a piece of trivia for you guys the actual coastal trail which is in the works hopefully one day is going to be contiguous between canada and mexico all the way through north america and it's roughly going to clock about 1200 miles so that's going to be pretty interesting to see uh, it to completion now when it comes to luxury ritz carlton is a name you cannot ignore mix that with two world class waterfront golf courses and you have a dream vacation spot for golf enthusiasts sitting on top of a rugged ocean side bluff the ritz carlton half moon bay delivers a five star luxury resort experience unlike any other designed to be both admired and experienced the hotel celebrates small details with outdoor fire pits surrounded by adirondack chairs a club lounge offering local wines and spa treatments which is pretty much driven by the seasons built in 2001 the property's 261 rooms were fully remodeled as of 2015 an additional 1 million dollar renovation of its 2000 square foot ritz carlton suite and a 1000 foot signature suite was completed in July 2019. The hotel is nestled between two golf courses at the end of Miramont's Point Road and includes 93 fireplaces, 6 tennis courts and a 22 seat restaurant. The room charges range anywhere between $375 to a whopper $3000 a night. The two golf courses are the Ocean Course and the Old Course. The Ocean Course is a par 72, 6900 yards and for those golf enthusiasts who are into statistics, it was designed by the renowned golf architect Arthur Hills. It has got a traditional Scottish design complemented by the natural terrain of the rugged northern Californian coast. With prevailing ocean winds, tight fairways and knolls, the course offers a challenging and enjoyable test for golfers. Pacific ocean views from every hole makes the experience completely unbeatable and it's ranked amongst the top courses in California. The old course is a par 72 7000 yards 
and it was originally designed by Francis Duane and the legend Arnold Palmer himself back in 1973. It was redesigned by Arthur Hills in 1999 and it is a parkland style course with a home hole that plays next to the ocean waves and fairways lined with cypress trees. So both courses are fantastic. They are unbeatable to get an experience. And for those golf enthusiasts, I can't say this enough. Just go play there. It's quite an experience. Man, it actually gives me goosebumps to say this. The finishing 18th hole that you see in some of the drone shots is actually one of golf's highest ranked holes in the history. It's a 405 par 4 stunner. It's framed by the Blue Pacific. And who else could have designed something like this other than the legend Arnold Palmer? The old course has actually played host to numerous US Open qualifiers and I can guarantee you that it will test all facets of your game. You don't have to stay at the Ritz to play, but there are package deals you can get inclusive of stay and a VIP gold experience that ranges anywhere between $450 to $1000. I've posted a link below in case you avid golf lovers are interested. I would love to play there someday. By the way, the coastal trail walks through Ritz Carlton and the golf course so that you can get a stunning view of both the backside of the hotel and the 18th hole, the famous 18th hole, which is 4 or 5 um, yards. So keep an eye out for that when you're trekking down the coastal trail. Since this is a drone tour, I do want to talk about the DJI Mavic Mini 2 that I used for filming this video. For a drone that's less than 250 grams, it handles itself so well. I'm really impressed. It's pocket size and extremely travel friendly. And if you want to get into droning, this is a fantastic beginner's drone. I do highly recommend that you get the Flymore combo though. Uh, the Flymore combo has extra battery so that you don't waste time charging. It also comes with extra props in case your props break. So it's very useful to have that Flymore combo. Each fully charged battery on a good day lasts about 20 to 30 minutes. When I say a good day, I mean more or less a calm day. The Half Moon Bay area can get very gusty as you see in the Ritz Carlton area shots. And you will also see this in the upcoming segment as well. The battery does get taxed in these situations and lasts less than 15 minutes sometimes. I also carry a boost bag just so that you know with me, uh, which has charging capabilities so that I can charge things on the fly. Um, that kind of helps me as well. By the way, I shot this entire 20 minute video in about one and a half batteries. So you know uh, how long it lasted even uh, when the winds were pretty gusty. And since it weighs only 250 grams or less, you don't need an FA registration, at least in North America, as far as I know. For a drone that is so small, it has immense power, man, and it can shoot in 4K and the DJI Fly app that comes with it that you um, can upload into your iPhone or your um, Android uh, has so many user-friendly options to make changes to your exposure times, Kelvin scales, ISOs. So it's very flexible when you're doing photography on the fly. I only wish it had more f-stops and gave us the ability to shoot in D-Log so that I can adjust things in Adobe later. But for the price you're paying, it has an all-round performance. Oh, and it can shoot raw images as well, so that's a bonus. If I had a choice, I would definitely prefer the Air 2S or the Mavic Air 2 because they are a lot sturdier drones, they can handle wind gusts better, and they have a longer flying range as well. Plus, they can be run using a smart controller, so it frees up your cell phone, which is a big bonus. I have those as well, but when it comes to travel-friendly, quick setup, affordable drones, I would definitely prefer the Mavic Mini 2 and it's an awesome choice. By the way, if you're traveling through airports, do take it out at the TSA checkpoints. They let you take it, but I got flagged uh, when I left it inside the bag. The TSA guy did say that take it out next time and you should be fine, and I have not had any issues since. About 20 minutes north of the state park is Pacifica, which highlights the Lindamar Beach. But wait, there is more there. If you really want to visit the world's greatest Taco Bell, yeah, I did say that. The world's greatest Taco Bell, it's right there. The Pacifica Taco Bell at Lindamar Beach is legendary for its beachfront views and a retro architecture. 
The building was originally built in the late 60s as an AW hamburger franchise, though it has been Taco Bell since the 80s. Now it features a mural by San Francisco street artist Nora Brown, a glass enclosed indoor outdoor fireplace, and a walk up window so that Sandy diners can order food from outside. Like the chain's other cantinas, the interior has wood floors, tiled ceilings, exposed wooden ceiling beams, and a trendy pendant lighting. It's worth a visit, guys. Just go there just for the experience. Labeled as the greatest Taco Bell in the world in Pacifica, it is called a Taco Bell Cantina. And it serves alcohol too, and it embraces a modern look. It takes fast food chain to a whole new level. You can sit there on the beach, take orders at a walk up window. It has an oceanfront patio where guests can enjoy their Doritos Locos Tacos, my favorite, while watching surfers and boarders. What a life, man. This is how you live Mars. Speaking of surfing, Linda Mar is one of the most popular beginner surfing spots. It's a mile long stretch just north of Pedro Point. That said, Linda Mar can also produce a fun and challenging wave with a bigger swell. The outer peaks tend to be the best shaped and often produce longer strides, which means even an experienced surfer can enjoy that space. So it's a one mile long stretch which can be shared by beginner surfers as well as advanced surfers. So it's a fun place to be. And on top of that, you got this uh, Taco Bell, which has got this unique uh, experience. Fall, winter, and spring offer the most ideal conditions for surfing at Linda Mar. And all year round, the area boasts a radical scene with green hills, offshore winds, blue water, and a nice surf. So you can enjoy it throughout the year, but if you really want to surf, I think summer may not be the good time, but uh, definitely fall, winter, and spring are possibly the best times to surf there. Okay, to help you plan your visit and make the most of your time at Half Moon Bay, I've listed a range of destinations and activities as links for you to browse and consider. As you'll see, there is no shortage of ways to fill your days and nights on the coast side. You can make it a day trip, or you can make it a whole week's worth of experience. Also, Half Moon Bay's historic Main Street has over 100 small locally owned businesses, including unique boutique shopping, mouth-watering eateries, stunning art galleries, and plenty of free parking. To watch more drone tours like these, don't forget to click and subscribe. Also, if you have any wish lists and you'd like to see drone videos of specific areas, don't forget to leave it down in the comments below. I'll definitely do my best. Thanks for watching and until next time, eat, drink and enjoy life.